Welcome, everyone, to another taping of the Was It Good Podcast. We're live right now. Not yet. We won't start the recording just yet. Thank you. Why are you doing this to us? It's very simple. No! <laughs> didn't comb your hair. I showered. No. I didn't do anything with my hair. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Is that cool with everyone? Uh, please no. put the hat back on. Really? It really? It got hot <laughs> and my hair's itchy. Can you actually put the hat on, but then pull it down <clears throat> over your face? Yeah. I think that would be great audio. Do you remember? Be so like, like there? No, a little more? Yeah, okay, Daredevil. A little bit more. Go Keep ahead. going? A little bit more? Uh, yeah. No, no, oh, no, undo, the, undo the flap at the bottom so that it's like... Yeah, yeah there we go. Now you look oh, like... Uh, Zemo. He look. He reminds me of um, <laughs> from the comics. <laughs> I'm Bay. Oh, it's so hot in there. <laughs> <sighs> I'm starting to pass to, out. You remember when you used to play Power Rangers as a kid, and then some people would have to be the putties? That's how you would make the putties. You get a hat, put it down over your face, and you'd be like, Boo! and then you would suffocate. But do you yeah. guys remember in Wild For sure. Force and when die. they would do their Power Rangers and they would do like their animal pose, and the Black Ranger was Iron Bison, and he would like pound the the thing, and then he'd go Iron Bison. Yeah. Right, I am a bison. No, iron bison. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I am bi- I am a bison would have been cooler. I am bison. I am bison. I am bison. I am bison. Like a burger? Yeah. I am bison. You are you're, you're, you're an entire food. <laughs> oh my. All right. I think we we can start the recording. Let's go ahead and get this show going. Let's get this party started. Don't quit your day job. Which one? The one the, where the, the day one, the, the one day, you during yeah, the day, the not day. the night one. What about my night one? The night walker. Are you a are you a street walker, night walker, walker of the night? He's I a lady of the night. I don't are you a whore? Him. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> are you a whore? <laughs> you a whore? <laughs> That's a new whore? Are you or are you not a whore? <laughs> are you a whore? You like your Dunkins, you whore? Wow, 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 wow. Boy. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait. We are recording, right? <laughs> love it, love it. It looks like they are recording. Okay, I'm gonna start now. Okay. Oh wait, did we clear the eight ten? Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We've got one action-packed episode for you on today's Was It Good with a look at Space Sweepers in Episode 70 of Attack on Titan Deceiver. I'm Ravi, and I'm joined by my two brothers, Christian and Arjuna, and our producer, Mr. Michael, is behind it all, making sure we look and sound pretty. That was the intro. Oh, you got one more line. Nope, I didn't, that I didn't, was I didn't the put, intro. I didn't put that line there. You got to read it. I didn't. I didn't see. The, and there's nothing. Somebody you ruined said the format of somebody. This show. Somebody put it there and made me promise that I would not erase it, so that you would say it. <laughs> I'm not saying say it. it. I'm not saying it. Ravi, say it. I will say it if you explain to Arjuna and I first. Okay. We're gonna reveal some big behind the scenes, behind the scenes news and drama. Okay. okay. So the format of this show is always the three of us. Watch a piece of content. Oh, yes. yes and yes. one of the things that we're I reviewing... Have a, I, I, I have a counter to this. Too. Oh, of course. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm digging myself. I'm digging literally <laughs> out my own grave right here. Yeah. And the four of the shows, the three of us yeah. will watch a piece of content, and then we will debate Supposedly, it yes. and ask that question of, was it good? <laughs> right? Yeah. We all, I think, maybe, I don't know, agreed that we were going to watch a great... No, we did. Amazing, agreed. first of its kind, space opera from South Korea called Space Sweepers. Yes. I watched it yep. during the work day. Arjuna watched it <laughs> Yes, at uh, probably at 2 in the morning. <laughs> some point in time. Some point in time. And then Krishna <laughs> yeah. forgot. I did. Why, Krishna? Well, no one reminded me. We don't yeah. remind you to breathe or wipe your butt or eat Are or sure? go for a walk. Uh, no, so honestly. Um, I actually, uh, okay, after I do have a confession. I've been texting Krishna every day since we got texting back in the mid-2000s to tell him. To make sure to shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Without those texts, good lord, I'd be so backed up right now. No, uh, honestly, after uh, Saturday, you know, I <laughs> didn't remember much of anything on Sunday. <laughs> it's not my fault. You guys needed to tell me to tell it's, it's, it's not my, not my fault. fault. It's, it's not, not my fault. fault. I did it for the art. It wasn't like, there wasn't like a point on, um, there wasn't a point like, 
on Sunday when you're recovering from the events of Saturday Honestly, that you were like, man, I feel like you need to do something. You know, no, it, I actually, not at all. I actually was close to texting our group. I'm like, oh, right, just to like double check on Sunday. Like, I was still watching have. the movie, but I didn't for some reason. I yeah. probably should have. You forgot. You forgot to do it. I think See? this proves that we have a communication breakdown. But I, I'm also, to be fair to Krishna, uh, Ravi, <laughs> you. Uh, have actually gone on the show and lied about watching a movie. Uh, a really go good back, movie. Go back to episode 100. Uh, Ravi claimed that he watched Mad Max Fury Road. He didn't. He lied. What is wrong with um, so, I would yeah. also like to point out that I propose a lot of movies, and you guys are always like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, and then we never do. Yeah. Uh, like, um, there We want you to feel respected in the moment. <laughs> but By then. completely disrespecting me and being like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. Like, I think yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I we pitched out like bad. reviewing uh, Minari and, and some other movies as well, um, like Malcolm and Marie on Netflix. And you guys are like, yeah, 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 sure. And then it just never happens. But you know, I, I can't even remember to wipe my own ass. You have to, you have to text me for that. So what do you what do you what do you want from me? I want you to have a photographic memory and remember everything I say. Oh my god, it's true. You should be able to remember everything. You would think so. But regardless of the movies that you have proposed to us, Arjuna, Space Weepers is such a colorful movie. Colorful and more, I would say, us type of movie. Like we are, for, I would say collectively, this is just a general collective statement. We like the big blockbusters. We like the action and sci-fi movies that make very little sense. <laughs> Wandering Earth is a really good example of one of these amazing big foreign space blockbusters where it's like when you break it down, it's like, no, it's completely and utterly bullshit. But then when you really kind of dive into it, you're like, wait, this is actually a solid, compelling, great world building film. And Space Sweepers is another film just like Wandering Earth that... You look at the trailer and you're like, no, there's no way. There's no way this shit is any... This is just a goofy... Justice League esque type of <laughs> bullshit. Didn't watch, so I didn't watch the trailer. But a big picture idea on like space sweepers and wandering Earth. There's something about them. I feel like t modern movies in America in the West, right? They focus so much on the technical aspect a lot of time. The cinematography, the CGI, the the pedigree of the names behind the actors, right? The director, like all these kind of superfluous items that buzzwords, and buzzwords, buzz and stuff. like a way to build up stuff. And like I feel like we focus in on those elements, while these these like f these blockbusters. Like the CGI isn't the best, right? Like it's the the dialogue isn't the best. Like it's a little campy, but there's like a there's a sense to these movies that is like a it reminds me of like the '90s and the '80s where it's like okay, it's not the best, but like it's still there's something like really enjoyable about. It. It's I think it comes down to like so Christian, we're gonna ruin this movie for you. Oh, yeah, you're no, you're no, still gonna no. go I back and we'll watch it at some point. Yeah, but yeah. it's basically space. the idea of space sweepers is humanity, the earth, you you can't live on it, it's terrible, it's hot garbage, it's climate change galore. And this genius dude creates an organization. Richard um, Armitage. Richard Armitage from uh, from uh, Thorn the Hobbit. Oh, Shield. So right. he has, get his name right. He sounds just like Thorn, by the way. <laughs> yes, he very very much so. But he basically is this super old human at like a hundred plus something. He's created a space <laughs> which they don't explain at all. By the nope, way, nope. The they they and he's created this space uh, space kind of organization where people are living in these you know very much kind of like Gub Gundam esque like Ooh. space colonies. You know they're floating around Earth, they're satellites, and the ultimate goal is to get everyone to Mars. And he's only allowed really, what, like 10%, less than 10% of the Earth to actually leave Earth and live in these space colonies. Elite. Uh, the the elitists, right? It's the very kind of like, you know, classism is a very big key thing in this in this film. I don't know if you noticed when they showed like the shots of the people on the planet, but I'm pretty sure it was just like all white people. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it was a meta commentary Wait, on like who Perhaps. this guy considered the elites were yeah. of the uh, of the planet. Uh, oh, so, so it's very much kind of like this futuristic, you know, doomsday S type world, but there is a glimmer of hope. But what I think this film does really, really well is the world building, right? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it runs in just under, I believe, two hours. It's two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so just over two hours. Um, but it packs everything in terms of like a very compelling, interesting story about where humanity's future is going to go, but then also giving you the backstory of who this psychopath devil maybe is um, and kind of how this world functions and exists and, and whatnot. And I think like movies like this, Wandering Earth, they do a really good job at this world building where, you know, American counterparts don't do things as well in terms of 
you know, creating a, a futuristic dystopian world, making it kind of just feel like, oh, this is really, really stupid. You know? I, I also really like the characters in this movie. And I think, like, again, to make the comparison to Wandering Earth, like, what I liked about that movie were the characters in the movie. Like, I thought there was a little bit more depth or a little bit more care to those characters. While you take, you know, let's take the Western blockbuster, a Marvel movie, where they throw in so many characters and it's like, I don't know who caped man number four really is and like i guess they were cool but what was their characterization well this movie like it has a smaller cast you know there's four main crew members essentially on the ship and so there's a lot of time that you get to spend with them you really get to know them and and such and you kind of care you like i cared about these characters by mm. the end and so I, I that's what i like really I really dug about it. And like when you compare it to some of those other quote unquote, like Netflix guilty pleasures, right? Like the, you know, for, you know, the, um, the triple frontier that you really like. And, um, what's the other one? Uh, extraction, extraction, right? Yeah. You know, I didn't get in as into those characters. Cause I didn't th think they did like a good job characterizing them. No, like terrible. for me at least, it was awful. but like for these, like, and I wouldn't say like, it was great. Like <laughs> it was like award winning, like characterization and like super, a super unique story. Like, Definitely not that at all, but I still cared about the characters, and I loved, like, the banter, and I, it felt like this was a movie that worked on that, like, worked on the acting craft and making sure that these characters had real relationships, and, like, it was just more believable than, like, Oscar Isaac and Ben Affleck to me, you know? How dare you? Oscar Isaac and Ben Affleck were superstars, and are superstars, and will be Always. So a couple of uh, interesting facts with this film. So it's Korea's first space blockbuster. Um, I've but, read it. Much like Wandering Earth was China's. first for China, yeah. yeah. So, and, and don't get me wrong. So, like, South Korea has done a, a really good job with horror films, thrillers, um, sci-fi in general. But they have not done, like, a space opera to this kind of scale and magnitude um, ever. So that's kind of interesting. And then since this release, it's been number one in 16 countries on Netflix, which is, I think, Super awesome. Really cool. They also have multiple languages in the show, like in the movie, I should say. There's so like, French. There's, so the main ones are Korean, but Richard Armitage is an English cat. Like he's, he's an American. Well, not American. He's like British. Um, he's devil. <laughs> he's like a devil character. He's from like Paradis. <laughs> oh. But he's he definitely speaks English throughout the entire movie. Um, so they actually mix languages in there. Um, which I think That's has more of an international appeal yeah. um, to the movie. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So, so because of obviously a success, you know, do you think? Our, I, I'll frame this for our June. Do you think there's going to be a sequel? You think it's the a franchise starter? Is there, is there something here, or do you feel like maybe based on how the story kind of ends, we good? I think it's definitely open ended, right? Like if you're going to focus on these characters on the on the space sweepers, you definitely have more story to tell. I think where they are in the world. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a conclusion that this, um, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, there is, <laughs> as our producer just hastily, like, plugs his ears. I'm right there with so him. So there's, uh, the, the central plot of this movie is the sweet, these, the sweepers that we follow come across this uh, little girl who is falsely reported as being a, a robot, um, who will blow up, um, but she's actually human who was injected with nanobites and like can actually like terraform and like do really cool robotic things. Right? Because this world is very big. A lot of their technology is based on nano nanobots. Yeah. So she's able to actually communicate with these bots and make them create yeah. life. She does. She does crazy superhero stuff in this movie. At, one, at the very end of the movie, the four heroes actually take a bomb and blow up and are going to die to like save the world. And she summons a bunch of nanobots from somewhere, closes them, and then brings them back. So she's Iron Man. No, she's like God. <laughs> yeah, she's got God-level powers. <laughs> she's the Matrix. I think, uh, Arjuna, we can agree um, Tiger Park, Mr. Park, yes. is probably the best character, right? Yeah, he's definitely has the most. He's definitely like very interesting, um, and I, I really enjoyed his character, especially because he's presented at the beginning as this tough. First guy. off, he's like this huge mob boss from Earth who was like one of the richest people on the planet. Then he somehow be lost it all and became an engineer on this ship, and then he becomes a big softy towards um, the little girl character. Like he basically becomes like a father figure mm. uh, to her, one of the father figures, I should say to her uh, character. Yeah, because they all kind of, like, the main characters universally, like, adopt her, essentially. Right. 
After her father is killed in front Brutally of her. Brutally murdered by the Halo, by the uh, Master Chief. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Wait, there's ma- yeah, there's Master Chief-style armor in this. Christian, it's a great film. You should seriously. Oh, I, even I'm, though we're oh, yeah, ruining yeah. it for you, you should watch it. Yeah. No, I'm still going to watch it's it. Enjoyable. You know, even though I know everything. That I, actually, I'm now. curious, Ravi. Did you watch the English dub or did you watch it in the original? I watched Korean? it in the original. The English dub, I, st- I st- because by default on your Netflix, Same. it will put it in the English. And I was watching it in the beginning. I was like, this, didn't, this didn't is like god it. awful. Like so I had to figure out because when I first saw it, I didn't realize it was a South Korean film. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't read the description. Because <laughs> who reads in this day and age? <laughs> So I had to Google it and figure out, it, figure out like what the language was, and then find and select the correct one. Yeah, I, I, I don't like dubbed movies. They just look bad. Like they you sound can't make bad. the dub look good. The dub never sounds good. Yeah, uh, I always like the original language. So definitely had to, to kind of fiddle with that and then get the subtitles, um, lined up and everything. I was like, I was trying to see if there was a way for the subtitles only to come on for the Korean parts, but not the English part, but I couldn't get that figured out. Netflix doesn't have that technology yet. Yeah. So we'll get there. But it was fine. It was good. Yeah. Overall I enjoyed that the whole the whole experience. Um couple last things here. Junior, you've got highlighted our outline here. What happened to the daughter? Okay. So is this is, your is this your yeah, hot take? This is, it's not my hot take. It's just the biggest question I have in this movie. So this is what's confusing to me, right? The the main character, our pilot of the of the group, adopts this little girl. Uh, you're his, saying Ta Taho? Yes. Mm-hmm. Played uh, by Song Jong Ki. Yes. Uh, ha- has a, a daughter, a, a, a little girl that he adopts because he's part of the Master Chief program. Um, Their military fra- <laughs> faction, basically. He's, he was a child soldier. Like all like all of his characters actually have like really interesting backgrounds. Like, Fucked up backgrounds. He was a, he was adopted by this the main CEO Richard Armitage character. He was then made into a child soldier. Then after killing enough people, he like saw this little girl, <laughs> then became a human, or like you know. Be- humanized him essentially that he basically went from being super rich got kicked out of the program became dirt poor like became like a gambling addict like just trying to make his way and then he basically uh one day like was told his daughter to go outside and then that one day he told told her to go outside um an asteroid hit the space station and she was sucked into space but here is my confused part she what died. Was she dead the whole time? Like, so there's this whole subplot of like he becomes a pirate and he becomes part of the space sweepers because he's trying to raise money to save her. And he has like a they say that she has a three year span to save her because she's still in Earth's orbit for three years and then they'll lose her. But what I'm confused about is like if you're sucked into space like that, don't you die? So the, how I interpreted <laughs> was in this futuristic world the nanobots play a very big crucial part to how society works okay. and i i looked at it as more their consciousness is either halfway stuck or transferred or something in like a nanobot system and you have 3 years because typically a decay orbit um not typically but i guess a decay orbit can take up to x amount of time before it you know burns up and it's gone so if there's a bunch of nanobots that are holding her consciousness um, that's where I thought that whole piece came from. And he just wanted to be able to say goodbye. Like, I think he knew she was gone. I see. I think. Or that's the way at least I kind of interpreted it. Yeah, it was definitely not clear. It was not the cleanest <laughs> piece of the whole of the whole thing. And I was confused. I'm like, wait, so is she alive? Why is he paying all this money? I am confused. <laughs> <laughs> she was dead. Well, I would assume so if she was sucked into space. She, or now she's dead. But I mean, like to your point too, like uh, Richard Armitage. Armitage's character, where he's like 150, and there's no kind of like real explanation. But again, I look at that where it's these nanobots because right. there's a lot of shots where his fa- he gets angry and you see red running through his veins. He looks like the devil. He looks like yeah, well, devil there's also evil a, or whatever. There's also a shot. I don't know if you notice this when they do a body scan of yeah. him, and it says 98% non-organic. Yeah. So it it's implied that he has this maybe like a more retro nano technology that the little girl has, but like his is evil, or he He's, is a hologram. Boom. Anywho, anywho, I, I, just th- sold the I, whole I think thing. I think Christian wants no. to to move it on here. So we are going to move it no, on no, here. No, 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 no. I think we kind of covered everything. Fault. It's I my own fault. It is your own fault. I think we kind of covered everything here. But <laughs> hopefully, we have convinced you to actually take the time to watch the film. Definitely, definitely worth uh, taking a look. 
Uh, because it's just you and I, Arjun, I'm just going to speak for myself first. I am definitely going to say yes is a very good film. I'm sure. It is uh, one that I will honestly probably watch in a couple weeks, maybe a couple months again, hmm. just because it's a lot of fun. It's a fun movie. It's a Definitely good, fun, a fun easy movie, and I, I do personally hope there is more to come. Yeah, I think that there's franchise potential. Kind of like Wandering Earth, I think there's franchise potential um, and, and a lot you can do. So I will say, uh, yes, it was good. Wow. I'm shocked. I'm going to say, no, it was not good. Get Even out. though I didn't say it. Just no, get I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Get out. I'm going to say the fact that I missed it is not good. There you go. I like that. So, no. You feel, you feel left out now. I, I feel, uh, now I know what it, what it feels like to be picked last on the football team. Wow. Because I was always picked first. Wow. Did you actually pick <laughs> when? when did you ever play football? Uh, Are you talking you about know? soccer? I was No, no, no. I, I was the uh, starting linebacker for the people. The Tennessee <laughs> Titans? Yeah. Wow. From 98 to 01. He went to Vanderbilt. What the? Yeah, anyway, we're going to get, two, specific. We're gonna get, get back into Traffic's what different. we're talking about, which is Attack on Titan, episode Ooh. 70. Yes. Deceiver 70. or the Deceiver. I think it's just Deceiver. 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 It's deceive. Yeah. It's either. Who's the Deceiver? That is what I want to know. I think <laughs> I think it was called Deceiver because it was set up where Who? it was basically the title is supposed to is basically a representation of the entire episode yeah. where bear with me here where basically we were deceived as the viewer that we wouldn't uh, end watching that show wanting to punch a certain character in the face yeah falco <laughs> what <laughs> no falco. gabby the worst no she's not Johnny. the worst she's the most annoying <laughs> she's the most annoying but yet most truthful uh, like true to what she truly believes type character on that show. She's Aaron. She's just a, she's just, she's. I think she's a, a, a more extreme version of Aaron. She's a more capable Aaron. Mm. More cap- yeah, definitely more yeah. capable. At least at the point of their respective youths, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Um, Gabby. Yeah, let's 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 discuss Gabby, right? Because Gabby was, I think, kind of the the central piece of this show or this episode. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Um, I think for me, the the part that was the most shocking not shocking but the part that you look at gabby as a character and you kind of realize there is no she'll never have that moment in in television where the truly bad character is like oh wait maybe we can all be friends yeah it's that moment when um there's the the adopted daughter the blonde girl that calls him out as being from marley uh takes her takes them to where her mother was killed and Mm -hmm. and and all this tragic and horrific stuff happened throwback and, you know, Gabby's still kind of ready to kill her even after listening to all that and still truly believes, you know, the mother had to die because they're sinners. the devils, they're sinners. And, yeah. you know, sounds like a religious Sin zealot to me. City. <laughs> yeah, she is. Absolutely. 100%. It's, that's the part for me where I was like, yeah, Gabby's she there's just and it's not I don't think it's her fault. It's the way she's been raised. Right. I don't, know I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Unless unless they're playing, which is hard to think because there's only. Allegedly, six episodes, there's only six episodes. Six episodes left. So unless they're you know going to try and it's a slow redemption, like super slow. Because even though you're right, it seems like she can't be set up for redemption because she's still pretty hardline. Yeah. There are moments on the episode where she's like, you know, thinking about it, or you know, she's being forced to confront with the other side of, to the argument where that blonde girl wonder, is yelling in her face. I wonder if she's supposed to be like a foil to Aaron, right? If they're playing with the idea of like Aaron's like broken bad, right? Are they going to see, like, can a, breaks char- good? can a character break good? Yeah. Maybe, and, like, maybe one's going to do it and one isn't. Maybe, who knows which is, I mean, maybe she breaks. She's, like, actually able like able to break good and, and do good, and Aaron just breaks all the way bad. Well, maybe or maybe they she just... can't go through with it, and everyone dies. Maybe. I mean, like I said, that's how I want the show to end. Everyone, Everyone dies. Just I just want the whole world to end, and then uh, the whole world gets destroyed. Cram, you know, the the rumbling happens. Everyone's dead. All of our times, everyone, and then it's like a millennia passes, and then the shot is an, a wall and people, and then in the foreground, coming into frame, is a titan, and then credits, and then that's it. No, because time repeats itself. No, that's time what I want. Loop. That would be dumb. Loop. I hate that. Um, but let's, and real I hate quick, you. so with Gabby, yeah. Gabby, Gabby. You know, Gabby oh, is weird. obviously confronted with the devils, uh, her and Falco. Mm-hmm. Um, she obviously beats the living shit out of an individual that generally... That shocked me. That was when brutal. She, when she, like, literally just 
killed that dude. Like, wait, why? Why did that shock you? Oh, okay, it wasn't just like she killed him. It was just oh, the brutality it was of it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, no. Like, oh, oh god. <laughs> no, no, that made sense. Maybe the shock part was probably that they. It was fairly graphic. No, I mean, well, it wasn't that. Not, no, no more graphic than Anything the show's else. been. You know, so a titan far. eating humans. But Gab, I mean, that's not shocking for Gabby at all, though, right? I mean, no, it fits with her character, I guess. It was just the. Uh, she did it. It was just she finally did it. She's been wanting to do that from like day one. I mean, she killed Sasha. Like she's yeah. She's so, nice and clean. so speaking of Sasha, so they, uh, Gabby and Falco are brought to this farm, and the farm is called Krishna. The brow. The well, it's the family's the Browse. The Browse. The, the Browse. But Krishna family. has a theory that this is Sasha's family's house. Yeah. So uh, I forget exactly why I thought that, but. Um, <laughs> uh, no, the reason the reason yeah. being in a previous episode, right? I believe the man because I think the daughter the daughter indicates like, oh, we've been invited to this restaurant That's right, where a man who is the Marley from, guy, is the Mar- Nic- from Marley from Marley, Nicolo, Nicolo, right? Yeah, Nikolai, Nicolo, Nicolo from Nicolo. Marley, Nicolo. from yeah. Marley uh, cooks at this restaurant, and yeah. then there's I think I believe it's the same man who's seen and is like. So oh, Sasha's dad. You knew my so, daughter. Right, right, right. He's yep. like, and he's like, yeah, it's on the, like, the, we come for a meal, it's on the house, and he's like, for free. And then our seat. just makes so much sense. And then our, is, we also yes. saw, that, killed her. In the flashbacks of the, um, the blonde character who, who mentions to, um, Gabby and Falco that a woman stood between yep. her and a Titan, and obviously that woman is Sasha, who obviously Gabby, you know, shot. Yes, correct. So, Bunch of circles kind of coming to a full yeah. complete. Which I, I think buys into Christian's credence of like her having to, Gabby specifically, having to come to terms with something because I don't think they put her into this loop of who she killed to basically start it off um, in there otherwise, especially like at the end of the season. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe they're just doing it and then she'll die in the next episode. And yeah. they're like, ha, huh, you thought we we're going to develop character? Just kidding. or or she'll be she's gonna be faced with a choice, right? And right. we're not entirely sure which way she's gonna go. She's gonna have a choice right now. She's gonna like continue with her beliefs, or she has to, you know, re- re- like give those up and in our eyes redeem herself, right? So we'll see. See that there's like it's not good or evil. It's just yeah. kind of gray. Yeah, which is interesting, right? Because Aaron, as we saw earlier in the season, like knows that there are good people on both sides. He just doesn't care. He's just like, I'm going to kill you anyway. Like, it's just it's like, remember when he talked to Ryan, he's like, it's just the way it is. He's like, clearly there are good people. Clearly there are bad people. And he's like, I think Aaron, I think honestly, Aaron's at a place right now where he honestly believes that killing thousands will save millions. Like, he, I think that's where he's at. He's just like, it sucks that these people have to die, but it's the only way for, you know, I, whatever his end game is, whether it's to stop the rumbling, to do the rumbling, or his to test the rumbling, you know, to do Zeke's plan, whatever it is, I think he honestly is like, what he's doing is going to save the most amount of people. So you're saying he's going to time heist it with his other fellow scouts? Time heist? And go back in time oh my to God. gather the sick, gather the Titan powers together are we to going, stop the big bad that is. Are we, are we thinking Titan Hot Top Time Machine? I mean, do you think it's a coincidence that Thanos is also a Titan? In Marvel, and this is Attack on Titan. I think Titan's I think a that loose a term that's no, been used throughout history. Don't they, I think I think it's all connected. <laughs> Time travel, call it now. Um, so speaking of Aaron, Aaron's you know best friend, person that's always believed in him, Mikasa, has a moment with a brand new scout who obviously is part of a new group that I'm calling the Aaron. Is it Aaron Stands? The Aaron Stands. You got the Zeke Stands, and we got the Aaron Stands. Yeah, the Aaron Stands. Flo- who's not? Flock, who's Flock, Flock, and, his and it's posse. not a brand new character, right? Because as they show in yeah. a flashback, it's one that Mikasa saved. Brand new scout. Right. Brand, brand new, new scout. scout. Yeah, but during her locking up of this new scout, Mikasa has flashbacks to when Aaron first saved Mikasa. Um, and, sa- you know, the way I interpreted that scene was that Mikasa was actually kind of seeing that scene for what it really is, which is a youngster just brutally murdering someone. Aaron's been a murdering psychopath from the beginning. Yeah. And she's finally like, oh, you know what? Huh. Right. Before he had time powers, he's, well. No, he didn't have time powers at the time. He, he hadn't eaten his daddy his, yet. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't eat his dad <laughs> until after the fall of trust. Right, right, right. Right. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So he, he had no time powers at that point. He had no. Uh, in theory, coordinate at that point. Yeah, he was any, just he was just he was just an asshole. He's I don't know if he's being an asshole. Because remember, he did that, you know, to save air quotes here to to, to save another person for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, the way in which he did it, yeah, was very brutal and you know, um, <laughs> disturbing. And the fact that 
you know, in that flashback, he does it. And then he's like, okay, I'll protect you. Let's go. And there's, there's no like immediate remorse, right? If that's the first human he's killed ever, you would think there would be a little remorse. There was nothing. Maybe it, he, maybe he's not. Maybe it's not the first human he's killed. Jesus, that's <laughs> creepy as fuck. I mean, Aaron's weird. Another flashback. They're based Gabby on somebody. It's true. <laughs> so the Aaron stands and Aaron, it's also presented that potentially Aaron had been meeting with Christian's favorite character. Yelena? Yelena. Yelena, uh, Zeke. Well, well, not Yelena, Zeke. The, right. the Zeke stands. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah. think Yelena and, Flo- and, and Flock, Fluke? Uh, you think they're they're like lovers secretly because they're both they both uh, have their own they're both obsessed with the the Jaeger brothers I think the problem here I think that (laughs) what this episode showed is that you have all of these factions these groups and these heads of states and these people popping up like Flacco Flock Flock said it best right Flacco Flacco Flacco. yeah Flock said it best where he's like you know Aaron is going to be our leader Right? And it's like <laughs> I laughed. I was like, What? What the fuck? <laughs> Why would was? anyone think that that psycho Who told is you like, he was a good leader? Yeah. yeah. What what evidence is showing you that he can lead? Well remember, we have to flashback. So F- Flock is a, an extremist in his own yes. right. Back yeah, when they were time. attacking Marley, you know, Gino's like, Hey, take it easy and he's like, No. They attacked us, they killed a bunch of us on Paradise Island. Right. And he's got the right idea. Every single right. one of these mofos right. need to die. You're right, because he's another character who's been shaped by tragedy, right? He was there at the end of season three when literally everybody died but him. Except for him. And he was literally, remember, like his freaking out and having his panic attack. It's like, why am I the only one alive? Like, why did I survive? Like, why me? Yeah. It's crazy to think yeah. about. Well, also, think about the leader he was following, too, right? Yeah. That Irwin? leader, um, Irwin. Irwin in his own right, the way that he was presented as a character and what we saw, his tendencies were extreme. He led a, a group of people to their fucking death. To get to that basement. To get to a basement, right? Yeah. That's, you know, in order to have that charisma uh, to, like, get people to do something like that, right? You know, that's cult leader. At, that's Jim Jones level <laughs> creepy ass shit, okay? Sure. And he saw this all <laughs> firsthand and he survived. I wouldn't be surprised if he's got some kind of like something happening in his head where, you know, he's going, he's looking for the next um, charismatic Jim Jones ass type leader. It ain't Aaron. Uh, I don't <laughs> know. But Aaron. I don't oh, know. I think Aaron, no. his brother, they, they might be the Jim Jones of Attack on Zeke Titan. It's way more charismatic than Aaron. Aaron is like the I don't little. Know if, I don't know if he's charismatic. I feel like he's more calculated and definitely more of a planner, but who? I wouldn't, oh, Zeke? Zeke? But I wouldn't say he's like. Charismatic. He, I, th- I think he is. He's, he's pretty he's like. Be, I am Zeke. Yeah, but he's got he's got way more leadership qualities than it's true. Aaron. That's why Gabby and Falco have, are, like Gabby's like devastated. Yeah. About his to ha- so to have those leadership qualities, you have to have a level of charisma. So when you compare Aaron to Zeke, Zeke looks like the nicest person you've ever met. Not the nicest, but the most you know charismatic. Right. Yeah. So obviously there was an after credit scene, right? Yeah. We got to see our. We got to see the fall of what happened at Marley. Um, all the Titans that were left all survived. Everyone Pretty seems cool. like they're back up and running. Uh, and it's presented that there's a world alliance that wants to initially attack in six, six months. months. But Reiner says, nah, let's let's go right now. Surprise we're a suicide squad. We're a suicide squad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, it was so good. I'm, I'm glad, though, because this is the Rhino we know. I feel there's you know Rhino's jump been, first. Yeah, it's it's just like Rhino Rhino's like before it before Rhino goes crazy, Rhino's like this really strong, capable guy, and then he loses his mind, right, while he's on Paradise Island and he's never really recovered. This is the first like signs of like old Rhino, I think, that we've seen. Well, actually Rhino was like a, season three or two yeah. or whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah. So but yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that the uh, the Warriors, they're they're getting ready like the Power Rangers to to go in and save their friends. But what do you think their actual plan is going to be? Like they're going to just sneak in the Warriors and just try and slit all their throats? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> you you would have to think though, like from a military standpoint, right? Yeah, they have uh they've lost a lot, right? They've lost oh, everything. the Warhammer Titan. They've lost the Beast Titan. Um. Their enemy on Paradise are, are, are uh, yeah their fleet uh, their enemy on Paradise Island is reinforced. Yep. They are essentially at the same technological level that you are, maybe even more advanced based on the fact that they've got was it Stardust 
Right, they've got like it, they have a oh, flying the, the, ship. They've got the some mineral, kind of flying the ship yeah. that also is the mineral, it, the metal though. That's yeah, for, uh, Stardust, only right? on yeah on Paradise Island. Paradise Island so right. they are a very Paradise is a very kind of well fortified area. Yep. Sneaking in, you know, I think the the big thing that Reiner is presenting is not to do necessarily a full blown counterattack. Right, right. It is no not because you just can't win. There's it's no just way. not possible. Their big thing is they need to go and get the warriors back because Reiner. He's got, what, a year, two yeah, years? Right. He's going to go, and then you'll lose that Titan power. Right. You can't exactly... And as I said, training up new yeah. warriors would take years. Yep. So they don't, they don't have that time. So it makes sense. And so they're going to go get them back. I, I think the key character here is Niccolo. Is, is, the, is, our, Niccolo fe- is our Niccolo fella at the restaurant um, who you know has been a, a reluctant uh, captive uh, on here. And I wonder if they're going to potentially utilize him as he's on the ocean at the the restaurant, as they say, to try and potentially sneak in. So you're calling him the linchpin of the entire... Correct. Shish kebab. Right, because like you said, they're not going to do a full level and scale invasion. I think it's some type of infiltration again that they're they're so used to over these years now. Um, it seems like they're going to go with one of those types of plans. And I also wonder, like... It's it you know a little a little uh, convenience here, but like with with Zeke in the forest, right? What's their plan potentially with Zeke? Like now that they know he's a traitor, are they going to try and kill him? It's like that part of their plan as well. What kills Zeke? Oh oh oh! I see what you're saying. Because because uh, now that Zeke's a traitor, they need to yeah. kill Zeke and take the Beast Titan power. Yeah. So I think so yeah, I think if that's you're part of their plan, too. if you're going to to do this properly, yeah, you would infiltrate, figure out where. Uh, Falco and Gabby are. Yep. yep. And then yeah, you would figure out where Ryan or um Zeke is, get rid of Zeke, take that have one of the trainees get that power yeah. and then get the fuck out of there. Right. right. And then hopefully you get back in time and then when the uh, world alliance is ready, you all attack at once with though you know, all that Titan power and all that right. fun stuff. That would that would be optimal. Uh we know it's not gonna go like that because Rhina is uh compromised. You know he's gonna. He's you know he's gonna be like I don't know what to he, do. He needs a redemption though. He needs to like he's redemption like, for and, and no. He, his, his ass has been kicked by Aaron. Like let's just go from the battle like <laughs> nitty gritty standpoint. He's been his ass has been kicked by Aaron, right? So he's got to kick Aaron several times. Now, you know, it's, like, not, it's, it's, it's not been, been a lot of times where where Zeke has lost or not Zeke. Sorry, Reiner has lost. But how so now he needs to kick Aaron's ass. Aaron is so powerful at this point that kick it's gonna take by surprise. Yeah, that's true. But it's gonna take it's gonna take like. The combined Titan power, and even that, is probably not enough. Because remember, they also have the Colossal Titan on their side. Now they're probably not going to use that to. That would blow up half the island, but still, it's true. It's, it's looking. It's, it's interesting. I think we're gonna have a. We're gonna have a very nice, a very a very nice, well thought out Titan battle. Well, right. We're in the <laughs> final. All the Titans. We're in the final season, right? So we we're assume in we're in, we're entering the end game. <laughs> Uh, I know we keep saying endgame of this uh, show. Yeah. Uh, do we think we have enough time for there to be a counterattack and then they retreat and then there's the full scale war? No. Or do we think no. this is it? This I is, think this, I think this is kind countdown. of the end game. I, I think <laughs> I think <laughs> Ma- is it Mappa? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's the studio. The yeah. studio behind it. I on it like I know we keep joking like, oh, it can't be done in this amount of time. I feel like it actually might be might done be. in the yeah. next six episodes. And I think it's going to start with an infiltration. And then either that's going to, I think one of two things is going to happen. It's it's either going to be an infiltration and we see a bunch of redemption things and we think yeah. the good guys are going to get their thing in the rumbling and then it's going to end the way I want it to end where it's everyone's fucked. Um, or it's going to be one of those kind of endings where, you know, you know truly no sides win um, and, you know, everyone kind of loses and, and, and Aaron, you know, is, is ousted as really kind of the, the main bad guy. And there's, that, a, there's a there's a oh, sorry. I think ahead. there's just a couple of things as well that are starting, that where if this was the last arc, I think it makes sense. They've reintroduced Annie. Uh, Chris is pregnant. Um, there's all these like different elements in play for the future of Titanhood. They've also introduced like new characters, mm. not new characters, old characters who are now coming to their prime, like the next generation kind of a few of them. So even though we, even though. It seems like it, it might be rushed in our viewpoint. It, this could very well be the final arc. It's like their surprise attack, and then the results of that will determine the fate of the world. What if the... Because I assume they're going to send all of their Titans onto the island, so you're going to have all the Titan users again, together, again. <laughs> so if we do go with the theory that Aaron breaks bad, 
if all the Titan users are together, what if they all teamed up to then take down Aaron? And you basically get like a one versus how many ever Titans are left? Six? Five? Because he has like four or three of the powers or whatever. Um, and that's assuming he doesn't eat anyone else. Right, exactly. <laughs> he eats Armin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I would have to also wonder, though, like if you're Marley and your military has been crushed like this, why would you risk sending the remaining Titans to a place that is so heavily fortified? Right. Because at this point... You're, you, they, they've proven that your Titans aren't that powerful. <laughs> like, they basically won. They basically killed all your Titans or were very close to killing all your Titans in your home turf. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if you attack, there's still no guarantee. that could The same thing could happen. You need some type of win, and this is probably Reiner's explanation. Like, we have to catch them by surprise. If this is what we have, this is what we have, this is what we can send. But we basically need this win because Reiner's probably right. Like, in six months, you know, if Zeke's on their side, they're going to have enough time to kind of have built their strategy and build up so that they, they're they going to win. They need that element of surprise, though. And they need those people back. And if they can kind of shift some stuff, especially with those Titan powers, like, you have to do it. We don't know. We're, we're not sure. I yeah. believe Ymir the, the, had. The I think ends. Ymir had all the power. Right. The she, she was the first <laughs> one, and then they split her body into nine or tw- yeah, nine, right? Yep. And then each the the whole thing of like eating a person, right, and then getting the powers. They like ate her pieces of the body and got the powers. Delicious, <laughs> yummy. Just make me hungry. Anyway, <laughs> Krishna. Yes. Was Attack on Titan yes. episode seventy? Deceiver. Mm-hmm. Good. It was good. I enjoyed you it. You deceiver. What? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I liked it a lot. Deceiver. Um, uh, it was a super Gabby Falco centric episode, but I thought it was pretty necessary because we need to see the other side, and you know, there that there are people on that side who are capable of being just as extreme as Aaron. So um, that was really good, and I also en- I really enjoyed the introduction of the. The reintroduction of the two characters who were saved by Mikasa and Sasha when they were kids, um, which has heavily influenced, you know, how they interact with the world. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And the future. And, um, yeah, and the end game. Uh, Arjuna, was Attack on Titan episode 17 good? Yes, it was. I'm shocked. I thought you would say no. I'm just it, kidding. I don't I don't know. It why. was good. And uh, I like that they teased the uh, future action that is coming with um this Marley counterattack, which hopefully maybe will happen next episode, maybe the episode after. Oh, it's uh, definitely the next ep- episode after, <laughs> not the next one. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. So excited for that, some more action. I think I've recovered from the first batch now. Like, <laughs> to bring on the, yes, bring yes, on yes. the action. Speaking uh, of batch, no Ravi, was it good? It was <laughs> wonderfully good. Oh, it was a quite I'm actually surprised joyous you said, I episode. You, I'm surprised it, you said good. It was definitely more fast paced than the last two episodes. For sure. Um, you got more information in terms of flashbacks. You you got to see where all these pieces are kind of going. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I thought it was, I thought it was a really well done episode. You know, there were definitely the pieces of uh, Gabby and Falco at the farm were some of the most uncomfortable yeah. scenes because you knew that Gabby was is a violent it's psychopath to and itching to kill people. Yeah, yeah. They also also like this show does a brilliant job of like mixing in really funny moments. Oh god. Like uh, we didn't even talk about the if Gabby you, part. If you're right? watching this on Facebook or YouTube and you look at our thumbnail, I used the part of uh Gabby's head getting chewed on by a horse. I'm pretty sure that is trending. It was trending. Um, Which is hilarious. A, so it's the funniest thing we've ever seen and we'll probably ever see again of Gabby, you know, with her head getting chewed up by a horse and then a bucket of shit landing on her head. Yep. Like, I mean, that is, that's the funniest thing you're ever going to see with this character because she's just not built for those moments. But they got it in here and I like that. And it worked. Like, the, the moment worked. Yeah. So it yeah. yeah. She that's is. like I think that's also though like that's one of the beautiful things about anime is that you can go on the you know the drop of a hat you can go from yeah. grotesque violence to kind of this more like subtle ha 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 lighthearted yeah shit on your head yeah shit on your head literally yeah. yummy no Christian you literally have I'm just kidding I do no 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 speaking of shit on people's heads oh no nope that doesn't work what at a all transition. but there was a band that used to wear helmets maybe they were protecting their heads from shit uh, Daft Punk they uh. After 28 years? They go. They go. Yeah, like 28 my, years. Like my, my age. They yeah. split. They said, I don't like you. 
Really? Actually, I don't know why. <laughs> I, Come on, Mo. All that, that I've seen like in terms of the reasoning is their publicist just simply said that they have split. They did a video, a music video dropped today called Epilogue. Nice. And that's that. Maybe they just told all the music or like had done everything they wanted and they're just like, there's nothing left. Yeah. So, uh, you know, friend of the pod, Zach Schwartz, he tweeted out, uh, he's a big Coachella guy. Coachella, obviously, a big musical festival that used to happen in the pre COVID world. Um, Basically put out a funny caption that was, uh, you know, Daft Punk, where it said, basically said, you know, can't have a reunion tour unless you've broken up. That's true. Right? So It's true. That's very, very true. true, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it's a whole big pub- publicity stunt, essentially. One of the, you know, one of the cooler cosplay bands, you know. <laughs> I would love to figure out and get myself a Daft Punk helmet. Yeah. I don't know what I would do great. with it. It's, it's crazy because like just a few weeks ago, everyone's like, "Are they going to be at the Super Bowl with yeah, the weekend?" With the weekend. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I wonder if this ties into anything. Like maybe there was it. this breakup. I think it was going to be hard with the COVID restrictions yeah. to have any type of featured other musician. Yeah, but they that makes literally sense. have helmets on. They're the best people to have in a cool. Do you think those things have like the proper like CDC guidelines for like ventilation? Punk, and they can afford it. It's true. They could build. They could custom build their helmets to be, you know, as, as perfect as they want hmm. in terms of fighting COVID. Speaking of perfect things, oh Ezra God. Bridger, probably the greatest Star Wars character what? besides Grogu. That's a hot take. <laughs> Ezra? <laughs> I mean, he's cool. Don't get me wrong, but the greatest? I thought Kanan was a better character. Yeah, Kanan. Oh, Kanan, Kanan, Kanan is 100. Both, both post, versions. Post-blind Kanan. No, both. Pre-blind and post-blind. No, no. Post-blind Kanan way, way better. Badass. Yeah. No, he's way more badass, but pre-blind Kanan is maybe a better character because yeah, post-blind Kanan is a little too perfect, too masterful. Pre-blind Kanan is like this young... Think of Obi-Wan from episode one, kind of like this hot shot, like, I'm a Jedi. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I, I like that character. So pre blind Kane is Jedi Knight and post blind Kane is Jedi Master. And Jedi Knight is more interesting than Jedi Master almost all the time. Oh, so because Anakin was never a Jedi Master. <laughs> and so he was interesting. You're on the council, but we don't grant you the title. Take a seat, young Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. But anyway, Ezra Bridger, uh, great character, f- uh, originally introduced from the Star Wars Rebels animated series from uh, David Filoni. I've heard of that guy. Yeah, he's he's a, he wears cowboy hats. He's a cowboy. There's been cowboy. long time rumors that a live action version of Ezra Bridger would show up. Fans were like, oh, he's going to show up in Mandalorian. Uh, it seems like the live action version is going to show up in the spinoff show from Disney Plus known as Ahsoka. As we know, Ahsoka what? Tano has been live ca- live action casted uh, by the wonderful... Rosario Dawson. Thank you. Uh, but this live action version of Ezra Bridger supposedly is going to be cast as by uh, Mina Mena Masood. Thank you, Arjuna, with the pronunciation. Who is most known for the live action adaptation of Aladdin, a Guy <laughs> Ritchie film that was strange. Guy Ritchie did Aladdin? Yes. Yes. Did you what? know that? What? It's a weird movie. <laughs> it's a weird Was it good? Movie. No. I, don't, I didn't even have to ask that. Iago turns into a dragon. Who? Iago, the talking parrot. What? Wait, I thought Mufasa or... Not Mufasa. <laughs> not Mufasa. That's Lion King. Um, who's the sultan, the bad guy? You mean Jafar? Jafar, Jafar yeah. Doesn't He's Jafar a... in the cartoon one turn into a dragon? I, I think I think he turns into a genie. A, de- an, a dark genie. Oh, dark, genie. dark genie. To rival the... But, but so, good I one. mean... Interesting casting choice, I think. Um, I think he's a great choice, honestly. Really? Yeah, I think. I, I mean, never, I, I never personally, I've Aladdin. not seen Aladdin, nor that. anything that he's, he's done. He's so. not like Aladdin's. Like he's fine as Aladdin. Um, I've seen him in a couple other things where I think he's 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 better, and he has some range, and he also he just has kind of like the look. I feel like, and he has that energy. I Can we just be Ezra blunt has. here in terms of what that look is? What short? Uh, <laughs> an actor, <laughs> or an actor who's not white. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess I guess you could say that, but I was just saying, like, I was just saying, like, his facial structure and everything kind of reflect, honestly, a little bit of what the animated version is, um, and I also feel like he kind of has that youthful energy that Ezra has in the animated show. Now, the issue I wonder if there is going to be one is Ezra's supposed to be how many years older from the end of Rebels to. Where we are in, you know, pre between six. So seven. rebels, he ends roughly around the age of like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. So by the time Ahsoka supposedly is taking place, we're talking uh, almost 
I think like 35 years, like 30 years later. Yeah. So he's supposed to be 46. Yeah. That might be a bit of an issue because he is not 46. And he doesn't present as a 46 year old either. He presents like a man in his 20s, 30s. Actually, I want to double check myself on so that. If, uh, so if Disney were smart, they would cast Shah Rukh Khan. And you would capture, you would. You would imagine you would immediately capture a billion people to go see uh, see this series because, <laughs> well, he's you know the he's, it's, it's, that's his, the biggest actor in India, so boom, could, do that. Could you imagine Shah Rukh Khan and then you make Ahsoka a uh, live action Star Wars um, musical <laughs> show? <laughs> they break into song. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah, just go. You on. could have epic lightsaber battles. That okay, so. okay. So I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So Rebels is roughly one to two years before Episode Four. Yeah. So let's just say two, just to give it whatever. Episodes four, five, and six take roughly three to four years. Let's say three. So that puts us at five, and then Mandalorian 12, is, is another five years. So in total, I would say twelve years. Oh, so it's supposed to be twenty-eight. Okay, 28. So that actually lines it would up be a under lot. under thirty. That lines up a lot. It would be. It would be. He would be in his forties if he makes it all the way to Force Awakens. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That makes, is hard. That makes more sense. The well, other thing too, there was like Star there. Wars timelines and years and everything don't really perfectly align with how we see time, so. They can do whatever they want. Hmm. That's that's true, I guess. <laughs> well, do you remember in episode five, how long is Leia and Han on Cloud City and running away from the Empire? And how long is Luke on Dagobah? Yeah, I mean, that time is... That, that time makes really no sense. Yeah, it's Light like a week. Speed. It's a week. <laughs> Easy. I fixed it. One uh, week. Light speed. <laughs> I don't know. Um, moving into some other interesting casting choices. I'm just going to say it that way. We'll start with the Star Wars into Marvel, and that will be our bridge. Oh. Uh, Daisy Ridley uh, will supposedly be taking up the mantle of Spider-Woman. Well, it's not. It's more of a rumor. It's, 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 uh, I say supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a rumor, and she was presented, and she's like, I haven't heard that, but that would be really cool. She's she's open to it. She's very it's open really to it. She's like, I, she's like, She yeah. is open to that Disney bag. Yes. 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 But not the Star As Wars Disney bag, the Marvel Disney bag, because yeah. it pays more. It does pays pay more. more. Really? Yes. Yeah, the movies make more money. <laughs> <laughs> so it pays more. Wait, which one is more? I guess it, I don't even need to really ask that question. I was going to be like, oh, is it which is worse, a Twitter Marvel fan or a Star Wars Twitter Marvel fan? Star, Star Wars. Wars. It's not Star even Wars. close. Yeah. yeah. And and I, don't, I honestly don't think that's right. close. And Marvel, yeah. like, there's so many actors just taking Marvel projects because it's just like, it's the biggest thing you can do. Star Wars For the money. is still big, but it's not Marvel big. Not it's Marvel not, money. It's not MCU big. Not yet. Maybe, maybe never. I don't, maybe think it, I don't think. It, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know if it has the appeal or the broadness to be. Um, you have to remember, like Star Wars does not do well in Asian markets. Mm. Uh, when you, especially like when you compare, like if you compare, like so a Marvel to a Star Wars. Yeah. Marvel kills over there. Like they love love Marvel. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars for whatever reason. Don't know. Just but maybe that's look. changing with like. To bring it back, you know, bring it back to the top, you know, with Space Sweepers and Wandering Earth, that you get more like of these sci-fi yeah. kind of blockbusters, and they're becoming more open. Like, why is it in 2021 we're getting the first Korean sci-fi blockbuster? Because it just, like you said, like sci-fi traditionally just haven't done as well there. But maybe that, maybe this is a sign that things are changing. And now, you know, thinking Disney, like especially they think international, they're like, okay, how do we tap into this market that's now being created with Wandering Earth? And well, they Space tried that with uh, Rogue One, hmm. Donnie Yen. That was supposed to help with. Uh, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head what the numbers did in uh, Asian markets, but yeah. Rogue One did do very well financially. Right? Yeah, the last 45 minutes of it. No, I mean, financial. <laughs> fi- what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Financially, it did well. What? How, financially. How, does, how does half a movie do well financially? I just want to know. Hold on, hold I just want to know how you oh, figure yes. that out. Yes. <laughs> and then the last but bit like, of. That was more popcorn bought during the last 45 exactly. minutes. Exactly. That's how I met you. That's I how, love like. Those, those stats right that there. would be amazing. Oh and then the last piece of casting news here uh, Jennifer Lawrence as Sue Storm. Mm. It looks like it. Uh, well, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It looked like for a minute it was legit. Yeah. And then it looked like it was debunked. Yeah. And now it looks like it's something. I honestly hope it doesn't happen. I Same. Think, I think it would be a bad choice. <laughs> Why, Juno? 
I, I don't have think you Jennifer seen X Men with actors, Mystique? Actually, <laughs> yes, at all. Was not the most was not the best interpretation of Mystique that I've ever seen. I'll say that. Also, what, what is, what is the also best, the actress. What, what is the best interpretation of Mystique you've ever seen? 90s the nineteen nineties X Men <laughs> series, anime okay. series. Okay, well, it's hard to compete with a, a cartoon. I'm just just saying. Cartoons. <laughs> um, but I, uh, but yeah, I do agree with you. By the way, I, I don't. I just, I, I don't think be. it would be the best. Um, who would be? Who? Who's your? Who's your ideal? Who's your ideal Sue Storm? Halle don't Berry. say Jessica Alba. <laughs> she's already done it. He said Halle Berry. Halle Berry? Yeah, she's change too, it up a bit. Go with someone older. She's too old. Thing. Yeah, no, that no. Yeah. Why does it have? I like to, Halle Berry. Why does Sue Storm have to be somebody? She does in her thirties or forties. Oh well, because and also uh, Halle Berry's in her forties, so no, she's in her fifties. She might Shut be up! 60s. Really? She might be at eighties. How old no. am I? Not in her 80s. <laughs> um, I don't even know how, how old are you. You're thirty nine. Uh, yeah, about well, that. also I wouldn't want to do Halle Berry. Actually, for the same reason, well, part of the reason I want to want to do Jennifer Lawrence. I don't want another retread. Honestly, like Halle Berry has done her superhero stuff. She did Storm. I liked her as Storm. She like, did let Catwoman. That... Wait, no, that wasn't. Or did she? She did. She was Catwoman. Yeah, okay. so she's she's done the superhero stuff before, like. And she's a great actress. Uh, let her do like other stuff and like expand her horizon. Like she doesn't need to do the superhero bag again. Like not to say it's beneath her or she should turn it down, but I don't know if that's like the right character for her. Hmm. Um, I want to see someone new. Like I think some of these you, for some of these properties, you can try out new people. It doesn't always have to be like established actor X, Y, or Z. That's true as well. What would you guys say though? So Jim Krasinski has been heavily linked to um, John Krasinski. Who would I say? You keep saying Jim Krasinski. Uh, I'm just gonna say Jim Halpert. Jim Halpert heavily <laughs> linked to um, Jim Halpert's already playing I know a character. I keep, I keep calling him. That's true as well. Keeps I keep calling him Mr. Stretch. Um, Mr. Mr. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. Mr. So Fantastic. What, what Mr. Would say, what would you guys say to his real life wife, uh, Emily Blunt? As that going. was rumored a while ago, it and was. I thought that would that makes sense. It's I thought that would be interesting, right? You know, because angle. like I don't know. They do really well together. Like, <laughs> qui- was it a quiet place? Quiet place. I like thought a, that movie was overrated. Uh, I th- I li- I think the premise of the movie was kind of overrated, but like how they actually they're acting in it and kind of oh, pulling you oh, in. You I when think. he was like really sexist and he was like, "No, I do men things. You stay do women things." <laughs> That's the whole thing in the movie. He's like he's like horribly sexist. If you do you think down he, that do you movie. think because he did he direct it or he write directed it? He directed it and, and he wrote, wrote it. it. Uh, do you think the whole movie was just like you know like a subtle message to Emily Blunt? Like this is <laughs> this is what I think. You yeah. <laughs> I, I All right, fine. Place. So a quiet place is not a good a good example. <laughs> but then what about live die repeat, which is actually not the title of the movie. It's it's uh, yeah, Edge, of Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, wonderful she was amazing. in that film. That was a great Tom movie. Cruise was wonderful in that. Is it's one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> Probably his so best. One. It's my only Tom Cruise movie. Mosh- I he's, like. he's, he's, no, he's good. Like Tropic Thunder. He's good for Mission Impossible. Oh, we got a we got a suggestion here for uh, Anya Taylor Joy. And remember, uh, our June is referring to our Twitch chat because we live stream these on twitch.tv slash Was It Good. Who's Anya Taylor? You guys Joy need again? to do a better job promoting that. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Queen's Gambit, and she was also... Well, she's actually it. technically also a retread. Uh, she was in New Mutants. But wait. I saw it. I saw it. Damn. It wasn't... You You would see that. Um. Yeah. That's about it, huh? I think, I think we're getting to that point where... Oh, yeah. Big Hero 6 is entering the MCU. Very kind of uh, empty article. Doesn't explain what characters... <laughs> No, it, it does. Explain. It actually does. Wait, it, it, it says, says specifics. They said it will likely include Baymax and Hero from from the Big Hero Six, which are the two main characters, and that they're eyeing um, the potential properties they're eyeing. It could be as soon as the nut, the new Doctor Strange movie or Secret Invasion to actually have them appear. Huh? Interesting. Doctor Strange makes sense. It's called the Multiverse of Madness. You can literally introduce any character you wanted. Under with, the Disney umbrella. With literally, with like very little setup if you want to. Oh, we're flying through multiple universes. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? <laughs> there, you, see, you, you, you see, wait. Yeah. You see Woody show up. There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> like, you see, and yeah, you see you Grogu. Just, you see Michael Keaton's Batman. Just why not? Wait, no, Fuck that it. doesn't make sense. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Because that's not it's not some, Disney some EP that some e- make sense. Some <laughs> EP over at Warner Brothers owes some EP over at Disney a favor. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, give me this footage real quick. 
you know, really fuck with fans. Wow, 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 wow. Put wow. in Harry Potter. And that's going to be all of our Was It News. Uh, and that's going to be it for the show. Wow. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And you're welcome. As always, you can find us on this wonderful, terrible thing known as social media. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Was It Good, on Instagram at Was It Good BTM, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Was It Good. We stream these pods live there every Monday and Friday. This, uh, oh, before I get there, we also have a YouTube channel and our website, Was It Good.info. A newsletter is coming shortly. Our new, next podcast is going to be this Friday on episode eight of One Division, aka It Was Agnes. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Nicely done. You're welcome. Wow. Goodbye. Wow, 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 wow. Goodbye. We're still alive, though? Now recording. All right, let's do the real podcast. All right, so here's my theory for One Division. Your One theory? The uh huh. My What's fe- a theory. So I, I, I had a new theory pop in my head today. Okay. For One Division? Yes. That it's boring. And it's actually because uh, <laughs> the theory. It's actually because so I decided I decided to Google the character known as Mephisto. Yeah. And as I was for the first time. No. You never did any research before. No, 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 no. <laughs> for some reason, though, uh, when you search Mephisto, another name pops up. Mysterio. Owen Wilson. Oh. Okay. And then when you start clicking on it, you see the Loki trailer from Disney's um, Loki. <laughs> the show's called Loki. What I say. You said, yeah, Disney, you said for the, the Loki, it's, Loki it, the show's show. called Loki. Yeah, I know, the Loki show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Loki show, yeah. Yeah, the Loki show. Yeah. The you're like worst. Disney's, no, the, like Disney's. The Loki show named Loki. No, no, I'm saying for Disney's Loki. investor call, they showed that oh, trailer right, right. right there. <laughs> uh, and when you're looking at the trailer, you see a shot of Owen Wilson talking to some girl, but behind him is a glass mural, and that glass mural is the devil. Or better note, more of the images of Mephisto. Okay. So somebody had presented the idea that Mephisto is Owen Wilson. This was presented back in like November Mm -hmm. of last year. Fantastic. And then if you Google Owen Wilson and Paul Bettany. Yes. And you look back like maybe three, four, five, six years. There's like a a weird like bromance thing in terms of like acting together. He was the actor. I think (laughs) he's the actor and I think he's Mephisto. Yeah. Five out of ten. On that theory. theory. There you go. That's my theory. Didn't Bettany say that nobody had guessed one of the people? Or the person? And it was. No one's guessed it? I don't well, know. At this point, is everyone, that a popular theory? Everyone, no. everyone from yeah, like Mephisto living to dead people, popular. I think. No, has but been Mephisto presented. being uh, yeah. Owen Wilson? No, no, no. But Mephisto being in WandaVision. That's true. But maybe he was talking about the actor. Right, no, I'm saying maybe Owen Wilson is in WandaVision, but it's not the actor he's always wanted to be with. Maybe the actor he's always wanted to be with, and I I think this is true, is himself. (laughs) There's also supposedly a leaked footage of uh, Magneto pulling Vision towards him. What? I'm still rooting for Magneto to be that person. Which would be Ian Ian McKellen. McKellen. Sure, Ian McKellen, Uh, a.k.a. Gandalf the White. <laughs> that it's like right after they announced it's Gandalf. Like, yeah, yeah. Brian Fools. <laughs> yeah. I multiverse. Yeah. I bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real quick. So obviously the episode drops Thursday at midnight. <clears throat> How mad would you both be if I texted who it was to you? Well, well, I'll be watching. Why would it you at do midnight? That? So yeah. hopefully I will I'm, be either ahead or at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, it'll be ten point. o'clock for me. So you're not watching it. I'll be up. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. You'll be. You'll be passed out. You'll be hungover. At ten mm-hmm. p.m. Yep. How? That'd be impressive. Yeah, you have this thing called a plane ride, where you have never we done do get one free sober. Boo- we do get free booze yeah. on you've it. You've never so. done a, a plane ride sober. Yeah, you'll be you'll be past even when you were a child, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. especially when I was a child. Dude, why do you whisper that? Even when you were a child. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you want to hear my cool TikTok theories that I found? On, In a uh, second, let's do uh, social clips first. Oh no! I want to hear his TikTok theory. Social clips first. No, I want to hear his TikTok theory. Social clips. First. There's a there's a, Producer, there's a few. You, you break the cut. You break the tie. You break do you want to hear the TikTok theory, or do you want to discuss this discuss social clips? I want to save the best for last. Let's do social clips. All right. <laughs> Keep that in mind, Krishna. I'm ready for it. All right. He's gonna forget. <laughs> Wait, I gotta remember them. <laughs> write it down. Yeah, I'm gonna write them down right uh, now. All right. So Don't social forget, clips. Like what, space we, what do we balls. feel? Uh, <laughs> what are we feeling? Uh, something from Space Sweepers. 
Something from Space Sweepers. Uh, maybe, maybe the, the comparison between it. Oh, the, the, the comparison. Yeah, for between that and Wandering Earth. Like, I think we, you and I do a good job of kind of like selling it. So just like a sales pitch, if you will. Uh, for Attack on Titan, I think the discussion around the counterattack. Ooh. That's like the end, right? Yeah. And I think those two should be good. Nice. And then, Christian, you should start um, figuring and pulling out some of the clips from the pod for mm. TikTok. TikTok. How would I do that? <laughs> how, well, how, how do you? How do you? Uh, <laughs> well, so here, here's the thing: like, so when our junior puts out those clips, <laughs> even if they're sixteen by nine, you can yeah. take them and then zoom in to make it nine by sixteen. Okay. So, like, if he if there's a piece that you say what you find interesting, you can just download the video and then punch in. And you put it, it on Drive, right? No, he yeah, it's yeah. on the drive to yeah. the upload folder. Perfect, cool. And then also like when we're discussing the social clips, if it was like, oh wow, I really like this for TikTok. Yeah, I can just I can just nine by sixteen it and drop it in there. If you okay, want. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Um, cool, cool. All, All right, right, let me let me find this upload photo though before I let you know. You could like for TikTok. I think maybe the piece about upload? you betraying us might be good. What? You being the betrayer. What betrayer? In the beginning, where I call you out. No, I don't like that. We're betraying us. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm trying. People trust me on TikTok. Okay, I can't, I can't be looking. All right, like what's your asshole. TikTok theories? Okay, <laughs> so as you guys know, I have been Tell me. heavily involved in TikTok, and I've uh, had our account follow a lot of um, different uh, nerdy um, influencer. Do we have a lot of followers? Things. No, we have seven. <laughs> um, okay, and I think most of them are in this room. <laughs> uh, anyway, do you want to hear the Star Wars theory first or the Marvel theory? Let's first? go Marvel as we're just talking Marvel, and then we'll end with Star Wars. Okay, I cool. Hear the TikTok. Theory. That's our name. <laughs> <laughs> the theory on TikTok. It's all an illusion. Uh, okay, so here's the TikTok one. Um, so this guy was doing a rewatch of Doctor Strange, and uh, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching, and. Um, right. What are you What are you looking at? I'm sorry. I just went on my TikTok to like uh, the search page. ESPN has our video on their TikTok. <laughs> That's some fucked up bullshit. What the ah. fuck? Why are we on ESPN? Did we get paid? We didn't get any of this fucking money. All right, let's sue their ass. Yeah. What the them. fuck? We're suing ESPN. That's the one with me, Michael, Start the next going show. like this. Yeah. And dad, yeah. You know, making what out the, the end. Fuck? We're not completely covered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We made sure. Video? The New Year's video from the two years video. ago. The video. You know the the the. the I am Iron Man. The, our crowning achievement in life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Anyways. was there. Yeah, yeah. I made yeah. it happen. Yeah. With you All right. Guys. So keep, go- keep going with the um, So anyway, so do- uh, this guy kid was doing uh, was rewatching Doctor Strange, and there's a scene where Doctor Strange is in the uh, walking through the the place, the temple. I don't know if the right word. The, the library. library. The library. Thank temple you. of Doom. And there's a wall with a bunch of books, uh, very important books, and there's a sp- there's a spot where a book is missing. And it seems pretty obvious that that's the book that's in uh, the basement. Oh, so that's why Doctor Strange will be there. Not because he cares about Wander or what's happening to these people. Trying to get the book back. He just wants his book back. Yeah. Do you have any books? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually uber bad. They'll be like, oh, thank you for saving us. He's like, I just wanted my book back. Yes. But why? I guess my question. Oh, that just. So I, I don't know if that's a theory, but it's like, cool, it's a book. Yeah, exactly. So, so it it's just really- shows the synergy between Marvel, man. Like, they just knew. So uh, th- there's only there's there's not really a theory. It's just an observation that could gotcha. lead into like okay. Strange appearing. Uh, Doctor Strange does he want a book back? What is the rest of those books, and how does that relate to the book that is you know was stolen by either Agatha, Mephisto, whoever the whoever the fuck is, you know, doing the shit. I mean, it also could bring up the question: It's like, is Agatha one of the uh, sorcerers that were trained under like the Doctor Strange method? The the, like the the Doctor Strange. Strange. Method, right? Hi, the I'm circular, Doctor Strange. Welcome method. to my method. It's called spinny 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 spin. spin, spin, spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is and she a spinster? <laughs> then lastly, uh, this one is not. It's really. It's not really a theory either. It's more of a prediction based on Pain. Just some stuff. Darth Vader will die. That the Bad Batch will be the ones to rescue Grogu. <laughs> oh wait, this is for Star Wars. This is for Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, he said yeah. it was for Star Wars. Yeah, oh. Bad, ba- uh, Bad Batch will rescue Grogu. Why is this? Well, we know there's a Bad Batch uh, show coming out. Yep. They were on uh, Coruscant during Order sixty six. <laughs> Um, how do we how do we know they're on Coruscant during Order sixty six? Um, yeah, uh, I forget because the last time we see uh, the Bad Batch in the Clone Wars, yeah. they're flying off into the sunset. We don't know where the hell they're going. Yeah, uh, that's they're a good going question. to save Grogu from Luke Skywalker, <laughs> according to Krishna's stupid theory. 
<laughs> it's on my theory. And no, we're talking about Order 66, which is right, not Luke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. uh, so for the ones that will say, we'll see Grogu saved by the Bad Batch yeah. in the Bad Batch show. Yeah. Um, because and then there'll be an animated version of Grogu, which is more toys to Because stuff. if you think about it, uh, there are different, they're defective clones, so inhibitor chip is either there or it doesn't work properly, so therefore they wouldn't have been. Can I ask you a question? A, have a, either of you watched the newest Bad Batch trailer? No, actually, I've been trying uh, to avoid I don't think so. I've been avoiding the trailer. Oh, then, I really want to um, be like. Because I can destroy your theory right now if you'd want. Or I'll, let's just let you watch the show. Oh, you can destroy it. Okay. The thing with the Bad Batch is the trailer presents it. It's not my theory, by the way. This okay. is just the trailer right, presents the Bad Batch as actually being obedient um, clones, adhering to the rules. Like, yeah. they're given a mission, go and slaughter whoever, yeah. and they go and slaughter whoever. Whoever. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's a trailer that could be completely false, but yeah. based on we've what already, I, we've, also, we've already seen as well, clones who get the inhibitor chip removed. We've seen one clone. We've seen a couple. There's a Which, few clones who would do inhibitor chips don't work on. Right? Uh, how do you explain three. Commander? Well, there's the Rex, story. there's the other one, and then Fives there's Wolf. or Blues or whatever their names are. Thin. Fives or blues. Fives or blues. Or, well, but, but to play devil's advocate to your advocate to the theory... He, they could be under order to save Grogu. From who? Palpatine? Somebody. Oh, I mean, Palpatine might want that blood. Yeah, he wants the mini chlorins, right? And we know that uh, M Count Christian. We know, we know Fennec. Shred, we know Fennec is going to show up in this show. So a Grogu, a Grogu, and Fre- you know, they're both from Mandalorian. It might make little sense there. Might be some connections. Another theory in terms of Grogu is. Um, I think it's going to be Obi Wan Kabuzi saving Grogu in, in his, his series, yeah. and him and Vader are going to fight over him. Ah, an unseen cutscene for episode. Well, let's three. talk about that. So, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, I think it was actually a couple of days ago, maybe last week, had said, actually no, a couple of weeks at this point, has said that Obi Wan Kenobi and Vader are going to get the rematch of the century. You know, I'm paraphrasing here. Wait, who? Pre-match. Obi Wan Kenobi and Vader yeah. are going to get a yeah pre-match or well, or rematch because Inter-match. they they did fight Inter-match. on Mustafa. I, I, everyone knows that trilogy is better than you know just two. So this sets up like the trilogy. Of but fight. doesn't that seem kind of silly? And it, like, doesn't that take away from the events of Episode Four where? You know, Vader's like, yes. I, you know, I have become 100%. the master. I've not felt this presence in so long. Yeah. Like, wait, why it though? really diminishes all of that entire, like, why? everything. Up to what if they do in a way where it ends to it? Not if Obi Wan beats him. Right. If Obi Wan stole the master when they square off, then why wouldn't it? In fact, it, 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 depending on how they do it, it could make it better. Well, Obi Wan has to beat him because he's alive. <laughs> Yeah, Arjuna. Uh, not every fight has to end in someone dying. Okay, a lot of times someone comes, runs away, or they get rescued, or you know, both parties are like. Well, then it's a draw. So it's yeah. either a draw or a win yeah. for Obi. So we know he doesn't lose any limbs. We know he doesn't go through really like any, any type because he has all his limbs in Episode Four. As you can see with Luke, though, you can make flesh colored, uh, you know, flesh uh, hands. I, I'm Maybe. not saying you're wrong, but it um, just feels kind of like you're. Who you're, knows? You're, it it feels better if. Episode three oh. is the last time they fight. Yeah, and then you know, because remember, at the I end guess. of it, Vader believes Obi Wan is gone, dead, whatever. At the end of Episode three, right? Well, Anakin. Yeah, Anakin believes he's gone. He's kaput. Oh, oh, Anakin believes Obi Wan is dead. Yes, right. He doesn't go like if they show up and there's a fight scene in between that 19 year period, right? Yeah, you're Vader. You come across this guy who is potentially the last Jedi. Your big boss, Palp- Palpatine, mm-hmm. doesn't want any of these fuckers around. You know, are you telling me he goes through two fights? Yeah, thinking this guy's dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, who do you how think? stupid do you have to be? That just takes away from the the the. Have the you met Anakin? Menace Anakin of Vader. is not the brightest bulb in the. In I also the, just in the from like a story. I also feel like Star Wars is running like by doing all these extra spinoffs and stuff. It's <laughs> almost like we're telling the story of every single minute of every single day of like all the time in between. Yeah, and I think that and. I just, I just, I just, I, I personally dislike that because it's just like it's kind of like the whole story is spoon fed to you and like it's just like sure. here is everything instead of like you. But can didn't you? Like don't you ever? Narrative. Have you ever wondered how Darth Vader shits? We're gonna no, I don't. I don't need to know that. I don't. Care. By the time we're done, Star Wars, the, the shit time series. We're done. We're gonna know every single thing about these people's lives, and. uh that's that's a great thing.
It's beautiful. <sighs> I don't know. Thank you, Michael. We'll see. On that note, we we're done. For that part. <laughs> I think it's going to be incredible, and I can't wait. Can't Goodbye. wait. Goodbye.